On Friday, December 10th, countdown day number nine, Hart delivered the election results to the rest of the voters. The 36 nominated songs and activities had faced the popular vote. Democracy itself had worked perfectly, so democracy wasn't the problem. The problem was math. With 74 kids casting six votes each, there had been a total of 444 votes. If each of the 36 different ballot choices had been equally popular, then they would have gotten an equal number of votes, a little more than 12 votes each, but of course it hadn't worked that way. The three biggest winners, Frosty the Snowman, Deck the Halls, and O Little Town of Bethlehem, had been extremely popular and altogether had taken 181 votes. The next three winners, Jingle Bells, I Have a Little Dreidel, and We Wish You a Merry Christmas, had been quite popular too, taking another 96 votes. So after the top six item had drawn 277 votes, the 30 other possible choices were left to split up the remaining votes, 167. If each of the 30 remaining ballot choices had been equally popular, then each would have gotten five or six votes. And this is the interesting part. Most of them did. And since most of them did, that meant that the last two highest vote getters didn't have to get very many votes to win. One got only 11 votes and one just got nine votes. And the last two, two winners were the Nutcracker Ballet Number and Carl Preston's card trick. There was nothing to argue about. Democracy had run its course and the numbers told the truth, but numbers don't account for feelings. Carl Preston and Shannon and Olivia and the friends who had voted for them were happy. So about 15 kids were thrilled with the results. The rest of the kids in the chorus weren't sure how they felt, except for Tom Denby, he was sure. He stood up and said, I move that we have another election. Nobody wants to see some lame card trick. What Hart said yesterday about this not being a talent show, that's right, and that stupid dancing stuff, that makes me gag. I say we vote again. Shannon spun around in her seat. Only idiots don't like ballet. So let's take a vote on that. Everybody who thinks Tommy's an idiot, raise your hand and say idiot. A dozen girls waved their arms and screeched idiot. The room exploded like a grease fire. The girls began chanting idiot, idiot. Nuh-uh, you are. And even if you had talent, ballet would still rot. Idiot. Almost having to shout, Allison said, do we really want to have a card trick as part of the concert? A card trick? I'm with you, called Ed. Card tricks are for loser. Says who? That was Carl. Says me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Make me shut up. No, you shut up. Idiot. Shut up. And above the snapping flames, Tim Miller was trying to get Hart's attention. Hart, Hart, Elvis is still in the show, right? Hey, Hart, Hart, Elvis is okay, right? Hart, Hart. Hart was paralyzed. The election had been completely fair, and now this. Anything he said would only make people angrier. The noise in the room made it impossible to think. Mr. Hart looked over at Mr. Minor and and he couldn't believe it. The guy was sitting at his desk, calmly looking out at the madness in his classroom. It seemed like he didn't have a care in the world. Hart even thought he saw a slight smile. Mr. Minor turned and caught Hart's glance. The teacher smiled and shrugged. Hart did not see the humor in the situation. Mr. Minor saw that and immediately adjusted the expression on his face. Hart kept looking at him. And then Hart raised his eyebrows and moved his lips, forming a silent word. And Mr. Minart got the message. The word was help.